on, darling. Come on. Yes. Well, <clears throat> calling up animals is usually confined to calling up your dog, isn't it? But there's a remarkable conservationist, a man in KwaZulu-Natal, who communicates with elephants. Lawrence Anthony is calling his elephant herd. Come on. Beautiful boy, huh? When the first of these elephants arrived nine years ago at Tula Tula, Lawrence's private game reserve in Zululand, he says he could never have imagined that a relationship would eventually grow between himself and this group of so-called rogue wild elephant. It's not a case of adopting the elephants. It's being patient enough until they adopt you. After hearing of the alleged brutal taming of elephants near Brits in 1998, Lawrence made an unsuccessful attempt to acquire some of these unfortunate animals, as they had already been placed in various game reserves. He then heard of elephants from Mpumalanga, which were in desperate need of a good home. The seven elephants were the remnants of two culled herds. They had become problem elephants. If I didn't take them, they were all going to get put down. So I said, absolutely, we'll take them. So we, we took them, and that started a sequence of us taking elephants with problem backgrounds. He showed us what remains of the boma the elephant were first ushered into yes, after arrival at Tula Tula. But it didn't take the stressed jumbos too long to break out. Lawrence's wife, Francois, remembers flagging down local villages on the road in the frantic search to find the lost elephant. And I asked these people, by any chance, you wouldn't have seen seven elephants. <laughs> And those people were very polite. They look right, and then they look left, <laughs> and they say, no, madam. <laughs> Thankfully, rangers close to Umphalosi Game Reserve intercepted the elephant and returned them. But with a warning, if it happened again, they would be shot. He realized he had to try something radical if he was going to save them. His plan? To stay with the herd until he could figure out a way to rehabilitate them. We were here for about three weeks. Three weeks solidly. I mean, we didn't leave here. Were you just going on instinct? You had no training or...? That's correct. Was the authorities just said, don't have anything to do with the elephant when they're in the boma. Uh, just leave them. And last time we did that, they broke out. So I figured, you know, somehow they have to learn to trust at least one human being. At first, Lawrence kept his distance. But all the while, talking to the elephant as he circled the boma. I talk about stuff I don't know anything about. I sing. And they get used to the presence, and they see that the presence is benign. The atmosphere was almost malignant at first. Having been subjected to the trauma of culling and then translocation to a strange place halfway across the country, these elephants were angry and anxious. But after weeks of work, Lawrence said everything suddenly changed. Everything had gone calm. And the matriarch walked up to me, uh, up to the fence, and by then I was walking, standing close to the right, fence, right. and she approached me and I backed off, and she stood there very benignly, ears down, and, you know, great emotion around her. And eventually I stepped forward to the fence and she put her trunk through and touched me through the fence. And I thought, well, that's it. We've done what we have to do. There's no more I can do now. I'll let them out, and we let them out. Since then, the elephant has settled into the beautiful viewing herd they are today. And he has continued to add unwanted animals to the herd with the help of Nana the matriarch who first reached out to him at the Boma. And on one occasion, this new elephant saw me in the bush for the first time and started to charge, started to come at me. And I was actually on foot, a distance away, but on foot. And the matriarch, Nana, and her sister, and Frankie, stopped the charge. They actually blocked the charge with their body. And they did that a couple of times. And, and, and over the years, that's happened often now. They will actually discipline and teach the new elephant that I'm okay to have around. It's very interesting. Come, Baba. Yes, my baby. She's a little the connection baby. between Lawrence and his elephant is so deep that they will often approach him when he is alone in the bush. And on occasion, will answer his call as we were privileged to experience firsthand. Using a sound that grew out of his conversations with the elephant while they were still in the boma, Lawrence called out to the herd. Within minutes, they approached. We quickly went back to the safety of our game vehicle. Normally, meetings between Lawrence and the elephant don't include a television crew. So he made sure the elephant's attention would be diverted from our vehicle by laying down food. Despite this, Nana came very close. Come, Baba. Come, Baba. But the situation was too charged, and Lawrence pulled us away. Let's go. This is Nana. This is the matriarch. 
it's just too frantic. We've got people in here, two Land Rovers. Normally with her, she'll stand here and she'll stay with me for a long time. You might think that they're domesticated, but when they get close, you realize that these are genuinely very big, wild animals. It's just wonderful to see the interaction with Lawrence. We drove off, but even as I spoke to Lawrence about our close encounter at a nearby river, one of the young bulls, Mandler, couldn't control his curiosity and spied. He's known me since he was a baby, this one. He's smelling, you see, what's happening here now. Did you imagine that it would continue, that you would have this special relationship with them? Not at all, Richard. And the key to this, though, is to get them so that they don't, they're not habituated to human beings. They have to you know, stay in the bush and be bushy elephants so the game drive, you know, our guests can see them. Through the trust built between Lawrence and Elephant, the herd has become willing to accept the presence of other human beings, provided they keep their distance. We watch the elephants peacefully for hours as part of a regular game drive. But before we left Tula Tula, we were lucky enough to get a glimpse of how gentle these huge animals can be when communicating with Lawrence one-on-one. -on -one. The strangest thing happens is if I go away, I go overseas or whatever, Whenever I come back, the day I come back when I drive in, they're standing. They'll come up to the, to the house. Mundler, who had been watching us at the riverbed, suddenly appeared at Lawrence and Francois's garden fence. We like to believe he had come to say goodbye to us. But more than likely, he was just making sure Lawrence wasn't the one doing the leaving. A day spent with KwaZulu-Natal's elephant whisperer was truly one of my most memorable experiences. And while it must always be remembered, that these are wild animals and therefore potentially dangerous, this extraordinary relationship with the elephants has offered Anthony a, an amazing opportunity to learn about them. But remember, always on their terms.